Norway! Mackie, you're from Norway, aren't you? I heard you. <laughs> You've got a number one Norway fan t shirt. <laughs> So I've got one, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm gonna get off after this stream and find out that Mackie's blocked me on everything. Reported me to Twitch for every rule break under the sun. If we're speaking purely off of rally games, which is, to be honest, the only times I've experienced Norway or Sweden. Sweden is more fun, but also more punishing. Because it always has the snowbanks, at least in the rally games that I've played. Where you just, like, hit them, and they are... I mean, they're walls of ice! So, what do you think's gonna happen? It's the same sort of thing when people, because like snow, people think it's soft and fluffy and oh, it's light and it doesn't weigh very much. It's like, yeah, but compacts that and it's just ice. It's the same thing as when people pick up a big stack of paper and they're like, wow, this is really heavy. So yeah, one absolutely paper thin, literally, piece doesn't weigh much, but put it all together and paper's made of wood and trees, so effectively you've just picked up a log about that size. You wouldn't just casually pick up a log of that size. Look so far in. Uh, generic. Generic high fantasy can be good sometimes, especially like I, I. There's a chance that I'd enjoy them because I haven't really been in anything high fantasy for ages. All the games I've played, to be fair, actually, all the games I've played for the last few years have been racing games and, uh, like, real kind of games. All the stories I've, I've done, all of those sort of things, are, um, are either realistic or futuristic. Or, you know, technology, steampunk, that sort of stuff. So, like, generic high fantasy... The last time I was in generic Kai fantasy was probably Warcraft. I actually want to watch the Dota uh, series. I should watch True Sight and I should watch the Dota series. Probably before TI this year. Oh yeah, the walls of snow are genuine, yeah. I've seen the real life Rally Sweden. It's fucking nuts. What scared me actually, seeing the real life Rally Sweden? I hadn't seen the real life Rally Sweden until after I'd played Dirt 4. So I played Dirt 4, and I'm in Sweden, and I'm like, holy shit, this is scary, the walls of ice and fucking all this, and I've crashed so many times because of a junction. 
and then there's the wall of ice it just ends because it's a junction and then you just dip out slightly into the junction and you crash and then I saw them do it in real life and it honestly I think the roads are about twice as wide in uh, in game as they are in the actual real real Sweden which it is weird because I would have thought oh yeah not even yeah it's not set for the rally it, you've got to have the roads cleared and that's how you're gonna do it you just it's that tall you just push it and you're just pushing it up obviously where else are you gonna put the snow Because in the UK we don't have enough snow that it matters we push the snow into the ditches and then the snow melts in the ditches the, the drainage ditches anyway whereas you've already got your ditches full of snow by the time the snow starts piling up yeah I actually think they clear the roads less for the rallies you know when I see the rallies they tend to have even if it's not been snowing they tend to have like a good layer which it could pr which is probably better for grip the fact that it's consistently shit rather than you suddenly come out onto a bit that's actually got some grip because there's no snow and it's tarmac now rip missing the rally I need to go to more event things. Like, I'm sad that the uh, road race near me got cancelled this year. There's no Tour of Britain I can get to or si any other sort of cycling events that I can get to particularly. Nothing happens near me. This entire county tends to be forgotten about a little bit the Midlands. Which sort of doesn't exist. And people always think that we're in the south as well because they forget that it's the Midlands of England and not the Midlands of the entirety of the UK. Because yes, we are the South UK. But Edinburgh is <laughs> like Newcastle is South UK. <laughs> oh yeah, they did that for our bike race. I didn't know the bike race was until the day before. Both times. Both in the women's race and the men's race. It was like, oh fuck, that's tomorrow. As I was cycling past. Well, <laughs> Guess I've got some plans to go for a bike ride out this way. Fortunately, it's only uh, about 40 minutes to get to where I normally watch it from. So I can cycle out to it. Yeah, sucks when you find out stuff's happened after it happens. Or when you find out something went went really close to your house or happened really close to your house and you find out from a results sheet or a, an after party type thing.
Oh, missing lamp parties. Fuck. I wish there was anything going on around here, to be fair. Yeah. It's like three months of, three months before it happens when there's not a set date for it. You kind of pin it in your in your mind for oh, I'll check on that in the future, then by the time you actually find out about it happening it's already happened or it's too late to plan to actually do it. There's also some things that just happen at awkward times during the day, like there was a running race I wanted to go see the other day. But it started at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock kickoff, and I woke up at 7 and was like, ready to do stuff at 7. I just couldn't be asked to fuck around till, t till like half 9, 10. Go watch the running race and then go home. Ah, oh, bollocks to it. Oh yeah, there's nothing actually there to catch thoughts in my head, it's just if they enter at the perfect angle they can just go straight in one ear and out the other. And I've got quite big ears so it's a big angle for them to just go around. And other than that they'll just rattle around until eventually they escape by my ears, so the only thoughts that I still have in my head are things that are uh, continuously rattling around in there. Perpetually trapped. I hate how there's no way to check what uh, weather you're on. I'm pretty sure that this is fog, not snow, but I forgot, because I did double check that I had no snow. Treat. Balls. Uh, rally Germany Come on. Rally Germany one week left by the way, Mackie. Yeah. Nah, I've seen you been playing MG a lot. I will play it more at some point, maybe. Well, I will play it more whether I actually stick with it in any sense of the word. I don't know, but... One of my problems at the minute with games like that is that I'm like ass at them and I can't I would have to play I have to play one of them for a long time to get good because even the amount of time I put into Xenotic it didn't make it made me somewhat decent at Xenotic at the time but that was immediately lost that like I didn't retain very much of that and it didn't transfer at all 
two other games. So I'm still ass. Whereas some people can be, you know, good enough to not ruin every game that they play when they're playing. Uh, when they're playing first person shooters they're not just ruining games but I feel like if I added it would just be an auto loss for whatever team I was on Definitely not adding until I get a few uh, some sort of practice in, and I can be confident that I will actually see my opponent if they're on my screen. Rather than just kind of hoping, dying, going, what? Okay. Because you know that feeling when you're up against a good sniper in something like TF2 and he blows your head off without you seeing him consistently? That's me all the time, no matter what, in Midnight Guns at the minute. And a little bit in um, other games, but... I don't know. I can see people in Unreal Tournament. I mean, they're bright blue, but... I might need to watch someone else's gameplay to check that... Because there was apparently... Linux has some missing texture problems. But I think I get away with it because I have all of the things required to compile the engine on my computer. So I can run the Linux one. Because I, I outright refuse to run the game through Wine. Through System Wine. I just refuse to run the game through System Wine. And I don't want to run the game through Proton. It has a goddamn native Linux version. I will use it. Fifty-eight or sixty-four. Nice. Didn't you only get the game in April, though? Like, it was mid-April when you actually got the game, wasn't it? Although I suppose it's only mid-May now, so, yeah. It's cool that they're getting games regularly, like, really, really is good. It's a good sign. Good sign. So at the very least, even if the game doesn't get, like, a, an active pub scene. Like Action Quake 2, you know, what the game's based off of, that survives entirely without a pub scene. No one's playing random servers online on that. But every night, a load of people join. Same argument of whether Xenotic or um, Unreal Tournament's more popular. Whereas Xenotic's got a load of people playing online constantly, but Unreal Tournament, you can join so many pickup channels that will have games every evening. 
consistently. Like, starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, people are adding and playing all the way till 11 o'clock at night with no break. No break in games, the people probably have a break. Some of them don't. <laughs> but the games don't break. It's just add and play and add and play and add and play. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Glad for it. Wake up at 5 a.m. to play pickups. I oh, know I've like woken up at like 5 a.m. and there's been a fucking ping while I'm trying to go back to sleep. And it's someone pinging supporters. That I do kind of wish they'd just get a pickups roll at the same time. Because it is annoying having that be 50% of the pings I get. But at least it's not Unreal Tournament, where I have to mute at everyone because they refuse to use anything other than at here and at everyone. So I have to mute at everyone, which means that I don't get announcement notifications. So I don't know when things are going on because announcement notifications. Yeah, because at playtesting at supporters, it's like, mate, I'm literally not going to be playing. I I would not feel comfortable, even if I knew how the game worked and could see, and could guarantee that I could see, I wouldn't feel comfortable adding at the minute the pickups, because I just don't understand the game at all. I don't, I don't want to ruin it for everyone like that. No. What other servers do they think they would be hosted on? Where else are you going to host pickups? Well, you got. Because you've pretty much got two options. Out of all of the games I've ever played that are like Midnight Guns where it's community run servers, you either call the server a regular server and you run pickups on it, or you call it a pickup server and nobody cares as long as you get off if it's chosen to be the server used for a pickup. And as long as you're play, only playing 1v1s, you can usually get away with it. And to be fair, it's only ever been an issue in Unreal Tournament, and now they've got a system where the bot automatically picks the server, rather than players picking it, and the bot will only pick a server if it's empty. 
Like it won't pick a server if someone's fucking in it. Yeah, I get that, but at the same time... Yeah. It, it's annoying on the basis that... You join the server, and... I suppose, imagine this once the game's actually released and it's free on Steam. Someone downloads the game, you're half filled on the server. Right? Imagine you're half filled. So the server looks open and they join. And that's the first thing they get on the only server that's got any people on it is now nah, fuck off. It is kind of shit but it's kind of the only way to do it unless you can get the bot to private the server. So that's the only other way to do it is to have the servers be public but then once the server is chosen, you private the server. Oh yeah. To be fair, what you need to what needs to happen there is the ability to vote the game mode you're playing. Cuz that's how we get around it in Xenotic. Even if we're playing 3v3, you vote 3v3. And then if somebody joins, yes, if this if you're still in warm up, you have to kick them out. But if somebody joins while you're actually mid game, they can't join mid-game and disrupt anything. Because they only get to fill the spectator slots. Because there's a maximum players. Like, can you imagine 1v1 and it doesn't have a player cap of 2? And you're just playing a 1v1 and all of a sudden some fucker joins. I've had it before, because I've forgotten to change a server from deathmatch, <laughs> 8 player deathmatch, to uh, actual duel. Yeah, yeah you just gotta use the team size functions in the game. <laughs> uh, I love Skyler. Great bid. Honestly, the only reason I joined yesterday, or day before, or whenever it was, was... I know I then left after like two rounds, but I genuinely... I died without seeing anyone until after I was dead. I... Fucking, I'm not playing. And just already feeling a bit crap. The only reason I joined was because Skylar messaged me. <laughs> I was like, fuck it, okay. Guess I have to then. Because I almost, almost certainly owe one from something of screaming or you get on from years ago. Yeah, don't think too much into that. Just, just don't, don't, don't think about it at all. Think about it. Never happened. Easier to just pretend it never happened. 
Ah, oh, fuck. Alright. Yeah, it's a 24, 36, 08, 7. Nice one. Cheers, Turbo. I only won a third of the stages. Nice. I'm crap at Norway.